In this video, I wanna talk about kind of one of the main issues that I see when people are coming to me and asking how to help fix their workflows. Because this issue right here is causing them so much more problems than just what's wrong with their workflow. If we take a look at this one right here, all right? What do you see? I see an agent, AI agent, AI agent one, AI agent two, AI agent three, AI agent four. I see an if, I see an if. I see a gift rose. I see a switch, which isn't even doing anything. But what, what does that tell me? Like, I, I honestly have no idea how this workflow would work looking at it. And so when people are coming to me and saying, hey, can you help me you know, fix this? They drop a, a JSON file, I'll load it up and it looks like this. And like, they don't even have like a workflow name. Like, what does this do? What's the point? What, what is, I, I think they think that um, because they built it, it's obvious what it does, but that's not necessarily the case. And it may not be the case when you're building your own workflows, because I've done this myself. What I'll do is I'll start building out the structure, something like this. And you know, I'll be sitting usually on a call with a class or something. I'll be like, oh, building this out. And we'll have an if, and it'll do this logic. And if that does that logic, and that goes over to this AI. And then this other AI will be the other option. And then I'll come back to it like two, three, four, or five days later. And I'll open it up and I'll be like, what is this? So I want to show you a quick tip to be able to help understand how your workflows actually work, how you're able to keep in mind what they do moving into the future. All right, so first step that you can do, first action item, all right? Add a name, give it a name, like test workflow to check for LinkedIn post or something like that. Just a name that when you go in, you're able to like, ah, oh, that makes sense. I kind of understand what this does. Second, up here you have these tags. You can add it to something like a social media, or you could add it to, well, what, I got stuff in here, like file management or N8N or power users or whatever. You can add tags and those tags will better allow you to understand what it is you're doing. Now within the workflow itself, what you do, and I highly recommend this, especially as you're building. If it's, this is the only thing that you do when it comes to like changing the innards of your flow as you're building out a structure, come in, and come up here to change the AI agent's name. What is this supposed to do? This one is supposed to determine approval, for example. Approval. That's its job. That way, when I see this node, I can go, oh, what this thing is doing is determining approval, and it's most likely using a structured output parser in order to be able to create an item that I could use here in my if node. All right, and my NIF node is set to approval, right? Okay, well, if I come in, I might be able to see that, but at a glance, I wasn't able to. So if approval is no, all right, and that's what it is. So now I can see here, this is gonna determine approval. This one says if no, then what? This one is gonna determine if for first pass, if first pass, all right? Now I have a much better understanding of what is going on in this workflow, even just by making these three small adjustments, right? This one determines the approval. This one is determining if the approval is set to no. If this is a first pass, it's true, then it'll come up here. So this one would probably you know, write the first draft, all right? And then this one might be make edits to draft, make edits to draft. All right, now I know what this thing does. I have a much clearer idea of what's going on with my workflow. At a glance, I can see the process. And you know, humans are very visual creatures. We have something like 30,000 nerve endings in our eye and only a couple thousand in our ear or something like that. Like our, our eyes, our visual capacity is our primary sensory mode. And so by understanding at a glance how your workflows work, you're gonna be able to better use these workflows because you're gonna be able to think through the logic just by seeing it. Now, the other thing that I really highly recommend is, you may not be aware of this button right here, but it's add sticky note. All right, it's right under the plus. You click this, and it's gonna make, drop down a little sticky note in here. Let's grab it. Come on, oh, not you, okay, we'll grab you. All right, now the sticky note um, actually uses markdown in order to be able to create different kinds of formatting. So if we double click in here, we'll see, double click, oops, I didn't wanna open that, but you do get the guide here. I, I accidentally clicked it, but you're able to use the sticky note. It tells you how to use the sticky note and how to edit it, but it's with Markdown. If you don't know Markdown, just ask Chad GPT. Uh, but basically it comes down to these pound symbols. And then, um, you know, you can uh, use uh, uh, the uh, asterisks for bold. You can use um, 
slashes or something for eyes or italics, but like you can look that up. Either way, uh, we can come in here. If I do uh, a single one and a space, I can say topic, and then we do you know two. And we say subtopic, topic, and then three. One, two, three. It'd be a uh, sub sub topic. And if we take a look at what that looks like, each of these is slightly different. If I come in even further and I just type, and what we have is an even smaller set of type. So you're able to come in, you can label or get notes or put instructions or basically just let yourself know or somebody else how these workflows are actually supposed to be working, what the logic was behind you doing this thing. And if you do this, you're gonna be a much better builder in N8N because it's no longer just about the nodes. Now this is a process, it's a system that you can see that has documentation of some variety in here that allows you to really get the logic, understand what's going on, why you did it, maybe your future plans for it. You can take notes right onto this, this workflow right here, right? It's, it's the, I think people think, oh, it's, it's software. Yeah, sure, it's software, but it's, it's an editing software that really allows you to, to build out. And so I, I'd like to make this video for all those people out there that you guys keep coming to me saying, hey, take a look at this workflow, and I don't know what, it, what the heck is going on. So please take a look and um, really take a, a, a chance and try to figure out how to be able to better manage your workflows, at least the aesthetics of them. I mean, I actually saw somebody um, just yesterday, and it was really cool uh, what this person had done. So they had uh, like two sticky notes, um, kind of like this, and uh, they had this down here, so there was some space, and it was just really cool. So they duplicated this, and then they uh, shrunk it up a little bit. Uh, maybe that, maybe not that much. Oh, it's because I have topic in here, maybe like that. No, maybe that's it, as far as it'll go. But they had um like a, a second uh, work uh, sticky note on top that allowed it to just kind of look visually appealing. I like really liked what was going on with it. I, I couldn't put my finger on it here. Let's see if we can uh, change this one to purple or something. So you have like a heading header banner on your sticky notes. You can create some impressive visual appeal on these things that will make your workflows more valuable by themselves. All right. Cause like if we had none of this, I'll cut, cut that out. Uh, maybe cut, uh, there, do both cut that out. What we have is this, this workflow, right? Yeah, all well and good. But when you throw in the visual, it makes it look like you put more time in. It makes it look more professional. And to be perfectly honest, looks, aesthetics are more important in many cases than presentation, or not presentation, but um, performance. So uh, bear that in mind, especially if you're trying to sell these to businesses. When you're gonna go in for a demo, don't have it look like this. Make sure you've got you know your sticky notes and you've got you know your your workflows set up nicely within your sticky notes with a banner that explains what's going on and and all of that. So hopefully that's helpful. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like and share the video. It really does help get this information out there to those who need it. Also, if you want a ton of free NADN workflows, a ton of extra tutorials. Join my free school community. The link is in the description down below, or you can join my advanced community where I have even more workflows. I have advanced versions of the ones that we have in the free community. I give away additional exclusive workflows there. I have daily training classes where I'm able to work with you on your workflows, as well as a ton of other courses and a bunch of really cool stuff, including Roger 3.0, our executive assistant that is not available anywhere else. As always, I'm Bradford Carlton. Let's automate your success together.